there, it's your uprising. Aaron Vote with Streets of Fire, based out of New Brunswick. We'll say that's your like home base as far as the collective band goes. We have Rocky, Mike, Steve, and Chris with us. Thanks for coming by, guys. Thank you. Thank you, for having having us. Us. you guys have been really busy working on uh, some new. It's going to be a digital EP in essence, right? Is that the way yeah? You understand it? The plan is to um, we we recorded about nine or ten songs. We're taking six of them and uh, putting them on on uh, making an EP out of it. Putting it on iTunes and Amazon, um, hopefully within like the next month or so. Mm -hmm. It's all depending on like artwork getting back to us. Uh, and then we're probably going to release um, like a couple of the tracks with the new batch of songs we're working on, and probably just put one online, like on our, our MySpace page or our Bomb page, to uh, to stream for us as like a, a B side, I guess. From talking to Streets of Fire, it seems like you guys are really in this uh, creative groove, I guess you could say, where you have all these songs almost stored up, ready to be released and, and unleashed, and then you have this other new stuff already, kind of ready to go, maybe mm -hmm. not at the finalized stage, but... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really trying to think about it too much, I'm just going with it. It was good. It was great. Yeah, Being very like zen about it. Our, our old bands, it, it was never like that. It was right. always like, all right, we have like five songs, so we have to play all of them, because that's right. all we got. And we got this much time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah and now it's kind of straight. I mean, songs just are coming out, and, and we, like I said, before we recorded Steve's place, so it's kind of like, hey, I got these new ideas, let's just lay it down. Yeah. You mentioned something there, the band is Streets of Fire, relatively new as far as the, the four of you sitting in front of me, but you're definitely seasoned musicians as far as being from Jersey, playing. Two of you have played together since uh, early teenage years, Yeah, right? 14 or so, yeah. 15. Yeah, my mom's basement every weekend, <laughs> our entire sophomore year of yeah. high school. That can be summed up by, uh, by past uh, bands and past musical activities. So then this what we see before us now, as Streets of Fire came about between all of you doing your own things, coming together, there's a kind of unique relationship as far as one of your members who you were actually a client of yeah. his mm -hmm. before. When, when we were together in an old band, um, mm -hmm. we knew Steve um, from his old band, and uh, we needed to do some like pre-production demos for our EP, so we were like, oh, you know, Steve has a studio, he's willing to give us a good rate, let's go in with, with Steve. and. Um, that first night that we started working, we were just, you know, that was the first time I ever recorded bass, and, like, he just helped us out a ton, and it was a really great experience, so when me and Mike were like, okay, we have all these songs that are ready to go, um, who should we, like, what should we do, yeah. and uh, we were like, okay, let's call up Steve, see if he'll, you know, record for us, maybe he'll do some drums on some tracks, maybe, you know, we'll see how it goes, and so we just called him up, and, um, you know, Steve signed on immediately, and you know, the first string of songs, he just sort of sat back and, like, let us do whatever, and then, you know, started collaborating more and more, um, you know, played drums on a couple of the songs, and, uh, soon enough, we, we had, like, a break where, uh, there was a few months we didn't talk or something like that, like, you know, phone tag and all that, and then me and Mike got to the studio, we're like, oh, man, she's so dead, you know, where the hell has he been? We were getting ready to go in there and just be like, Steve, what the hell, man, we're like, where are my mixes? What have you been doing? <laughs> you show up, and he's like, "Ah, oh, I, you know, I'm not with my band anymore. I want to join your band." And, and then we're like, it. It like yeah, "Everything's <laughs> cool awesome." <laughs> and then, and then showed us the mixes that were all done, and yeah. we're like, "They spent." Oh, like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't call you back because I was working too hard yeah, yeah. on <laughs> the mixes, basically. So it seems like you guys have taken kind of. For lack of a less cliche word, a journey as far as starting out as musicians here in Jersey. You grow up, you have your bands. I know you guys are everything from you know punk and rock to like Springsteen fans. Being from the yeah. state, it's hard to escape. And it seems like you got into it. You know, as young musicians, it's easy to, to have big dreams of uh, skyrocketing to some crazy level. And now it seems like you guys really just have a unified vision as a band, and it's more about the process and yeah, not just like an end point. Yeah, it's it's you know it's definitely about the fun and. The funny thing is that, at least for, I know pretty much from talking to everybody, like Chris included, and you know, we've always kind of had this idea like, if we could play like, like large clubs for the rest of our lives, we'd be ecstatic. Like, granted, like everyone would love to play like Giant Stadium. I mean, like that's that's awesome. You right. know, you would love to be in that position, but if we never made it to that point, it wasn't going to be like, yeah, heartbroken. That was right? never like the main goal. That was never like, the main goal. It was kind of like, well. I, this is what we like to do. It's you know, yeah. I guess some kids play little league. We were just like, let's lock ourselves in the basement, and listen to CDs, <laughs> and yeah. try and rip them off, and, and, their own songs, you know? yeah. and, and come just, up with your own stuff along the way. Yeah. That obviously mm -hmm. stands out. 
talking about the new release from Streets of Fire, which you can look forward pretty much as you're watching this. It might be available within the next couple weeks or so. Just want to ask you before we let you play a couple songs uh, from the new stuff. When you decided to do just the digital route, I'd imagine that that's kind of a time saver and a stress saver in a lot of ways these, these days, I would imagine. Yeah, and yeah. kind a of storage saver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, like, you know, again, we learned basically everything that we're carrying out in this band from old bands. And, um, you know, we spent thousands and thousands of dollars on, on recording costs. And, you know, we, we went this whole route of, like, you know, we were an unknown band. Um, like, you know, completely fresh, like nobody really liked us or, you know, was really excited about our release. And we spent so much money on recording, we had mastered uh, by, you know, the guy who did like Back in Black and Appetite for Destruction. So, you know, we just went crazy and spent all this money and, and pressed it up. And then, you know, that band implodes six months later. You know, and you realize that And you're like, all. oh man, I've, we've only sold like yeah. 200 CDs. <laughs> out of the thousand. Out of the thousand. You know, and we're like, they're sitting in my mom's garage and I'm not seeing any return from it. And, right. Uh, so this way we were kind of like, we, we've been taking baby steps a lot. It lets us get the songs out quicker too. Right. I mean, yeah. we could record them and just put them up you know, as soon as they're done, which mm -hmm. if we wanted to, which is kind of nice. You know? And it's less of a frustration and less of a, uh, a boredom factor because right. by the time you work through you some songs and press program, them, yeah. yeah, you want to move on to the new stuff. Mm -hmm. so. So people can be guaranteed to hear the precious music possible from yeah. Streets of Fire, it yeah. sounds like, as you guys work through them. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> we want to give people the website to go to where they can find not only the release once it's done, but also the shows that you guys will be playing to support it. So the website. Um, we basically use everything right now through our MySpace page, which is uh, myspace.com slash Streets of Fire Music. And it's probably going to be streetsoffiremusic.com. Yeah. It's, it's going to be Streets of Fire Music. Just yeah, yeah, if uh, anyone knows about that. B movie from the 80s. It was off of that. Yeah. 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 Well, the, basically, yeah. the thing is that we, we took our name from like the Springsteen song, mm -hmm. uh, Streets of Fire, and then when we were like, okay, that's awesome. Like, we finally, because like, we're horrible at naming things, obviously. We can't think of a name for this. It worked, like, we'll go with that. Like, like yeah. there's movies out there, and it's yeah. terrible. But... Apparently, <laughs> apparently, though, like, okay. we tried to sign up our, our MySpace URL to be, you know, MySpace slash uh, Streets of Fire, and when I try to do it, they're like, Rick Moranis. Pops yeah. <laughs> and apparently it's, it's just some guy like yeah. who made it as a fan. Like as we had a fan page a fan for the movie. <laughs> and we were like, really? Like, but you know. To have you Rick Moranis. Yeah, so, exactly. so, so the moral of it is it's myspace.com, streets of fire music, as you said, and that's the place to go. So you guys are gonna play a couple songs, you can look for them there and iTunes and Amazon and this is G Rock Rising.